Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to ApacheCon at Home 2020. For this session, we have uh, Apache Lucene and Solar Committer PMC member and ASF member, David Smiley. Uh, David has written books, delivered trainings, and uh, he speaks at meetups and conferences all the time, which is what we were just talking about. Um, he works on search at Salesforce, and today David will be talking about Solar's new cool plugin system uh, from the intent behind this, uh, he's going to go ahead with a demo and also uh, do a sneak peek under the hood. Uh, hope you enjoy the session. Over to you, David. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that uh, that intro. Yeah, I pointed a, a book behind me and I I could have brought over all of my conference lanyards. I have them all nearby. It's like, I don't, I don't know how many there are. <laughs> so, okay, welcome everybody. Uh, Solar's new package manager, uh, and a topic I'm excited to tell you about. Uh, Antrim just gave me a, gave a nice little intro for me. I don't need to repeat any information there. I'm really thankful for Salesforce to support my <clears throat> my time to contributing to open source and solar. I have a quiz question for you, and I want you to think about this. Um, uh, in the chat window, um, when I say go, type in a guess as to how many uh, plugin types there are. Okay. And examples of the plugin types would be uh, on the screen here. We see field type, shard handler, factory, query parser, transformer, blah, blah, blah. There's, there are many of them. Okay. So I, when I count down to zero, I want you to blurt out your guess. Five in Lucene and Solar. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Hit return. Spit it out there. Okay. Okay. So the numbers I'm seeing so far are roughly what I was expecting as well. I, I think I was leaning more towards the 60-ish side. If, if I were to, if, when I was originally, when I originally thought of this question, I was like, oh, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's 50, something like that. Um, and I went to find the, and I, I, I started looking to find the answer. And um, <laughs> Emmer had seen my presentation before. He knows the answer. Uh, I, there is no, I don't have a precise answer, and uh, it doesn't matter. It, but, but the message I want to get across is that it's a lot. Uh, there isn't exactly one spot that loads them all. There are, uh, I want to say, a couple, but then uh, there's a bunch of methods that call into there and a bunch of other places called those places. So finding the, the exact number is, um, you know, you can figure it out. But what matters here is that it's a lot. Solar is extremely pluggable, and solar needs to be pluggable. Pl search platforms do, because these are not um, um, like relational databases in the sense that um, they all kind of work in a similar way. Um, you just swap it in. No, I mean, search platforms are things that are, are fundamentally platforms or things we need to build on. We need to plug it. We need to use existing ones. We need to write our own. Okay, so plugins are important. Where do we find these uh, plugins? Well, Solar comes with lots of them. There are uh, many that are just simply built in. There are some that are so-called contribs. It's in the contrib directory of Solar. Um, and you shall find some out on the web elsewhere. I'll just call that third party. Most people don't need to venture beyond built in and contrib which is kind of a shame um, because it does mean that a lot of plugins kind of gravitate towards being become, becoming a part of Lucene Solar. Otherwise, no one, uh, no one knows about them. That's kind of a segue to my other point, you know, like where do you find out about them? You know, um, uh, there's the ref guide, which is great. Uh, there's my book, there's other books, your colleagues, meetups. Um, yeah. So if you get a hold of a plugin that you need to install because it's not in there already, um, how do you do it? It's pretty much adding some jar files into Solar. The top one, Solar Home Lib, is the generally the best spot to put it. Uh, depending on how old your installation is, you might use Solar Core Lib for really old standalone ones with different configs per core. Also, your Solar Config can reference it with the lib directive, which is kind of... I don't know. Um, I don't want to say it's quite deprecated yet, but um, it can be problematic 
uh, and the, the kind of the future vision of, of solar with, with plugins. It may be necessary to throw it into WebInfLib, which is where solar itself and all of its jars are. I, I hate putting things there, but if you need to, you do. And there are some rare cases where you need to, like a JTS is a specific example where you would. Um, also, it's worth pointing out that not only does solar um, have plugins, but solar sits on Jetty internally uh, that has plugins as well. You might add a cores servlet filter or something like that. Also, there's the, the Java itself and logging system. Uh, but those are kind of out of scope of what I'm addressing today. And after you uh, install the uh, the jars, you have to, you almost always, like with, with almost, uh, I, don't, I doubt there's any exceptions, you need to do something to configure it. It doesn't, it, it's, it's mere existence uh, in a jar file is almost never enough. You ha it has to be configured. Sometimes the configuration is done the same way all the time. Like you have a query parser, you're probably going to name it in an obvious way. And many query parsers I've seen, they don't, they're, they're just, you register it the same way. And at that point you can configure it at query time with parameters or something, but some don't. Some custom plugins need to know how to talk to some database or, um, or maybe there's a, a token filter where there's no like default way for you to even register it because a token filter, for example, exists within the context of a chain. And so there's a question of, well, which field type should be added to in which um, spot. So as the, the, the theme here is that you have to configure it. And sometimes there's an obvious configuration that's always done the same way. Sometimes it's really fundamentally uh, up to you to choose the right spot in your configuration to do it. And let's say you're, you've got a plugin, you like it, and it has a new version, and you want to use that new version. How do we upgrade? Um, and you know, if you're just playing around on your on your local machine, this is pretty straightforward. You kind of drop the jar in, and bingo, uh, and you sh you shut it down, and you start up Solar, of course. But if in a in a de deployed uh, in, in a production environment, um, especially one involving Solar Cloud. Um, even if it's not solar cloud, I mean, you have to figure out how am I going to get these jar files to the right nodes? Um, do I have to restart? If I restart, is there downtime? Um, what, if, what if there's different configurations? So it definitely gets hard. Um, possible, but but hard, and yeah. And so that, that's probably one of the biggest pain points that um, that we'd like to address with the with a plugin um, with with a new system to manage these plugins. So Solar isn't the first, certainly not the search platform to want uh, a system to kind of manage, uh, to manage uh, obtaining these plugins and um, installing them. Certainly not. Uh, I'm sure you've seen utilities like RPM or Brew. Um, I really like uh, Docker Hub to draw inspiration from and how you get and run Docker images. Uh, my IDE has its own plugin system that I can find and install them. And what's, what, what's nice about these systems in general is that you can, it provides uh, a single place to discover them and a single way to install it. And, um, and then the configuration, um, it, it kind of depends on what it is, uh, what aspect of the config is there. So yeah, we'd like this to be easier and we'd like to solve that pain point of like, how do we deploy these, these, um, these new, new updates in a way that that's much easier than today where it's very roll up your sleeves and do it yourself. Okay, so this is very important to Solar, much more important than the previous slide suggests. Uh, as someone who maintains Solar, there are many, what I call second order effects from, there's the immediacy of the feature and what it is, and that has some utility to you as users, and that's great. But once, once Solar has this system, and it does have the system, and once it's more fully embraced, then it, uh, there's a bunch of secondary benefits that are going that are fantastic because of this. Okay, so one example is better security. Solar is so batteries included; it comes with all the functionality you might need. And if one of those one of those thingies plugins have a security vulnerability, then it becomes your problem, even though you're not using the plugin. Um, it allows for fewer dependencies of um, of Solar Core. So lots of, there's a bunch of jars in Solar that are there basically because of a plugin or two, okay? So once we can 
decomposing solar as, uh, think of it as a monolith, uh, a more leaner system with a strengthened um, system where plugins are in packages that are managed with separate class loaders, okay? And, and this also allows for a future where um, we don't need to have so much pressure to have solar to have everything included. If there's a really healthy plugin system, it's totally okay for your, pl for your awesome plugin to be uh, hosted somewhere else, discoverable in a solar registry where other people can find it. And for as long as people can install it really easily, who cares that it's not in solar core? Okay. But today, we, that's not the reality we really quite have today. So there's pressure for people to, to get their, their, their plugin into solar. And that's not good for the health of the solar project. Um, also, I mean, it's hard. There's so many, there's so many reasons. I've listed a bunch on the screen here. Um, and another one I like that, that's hard to miss is, is that, uh, easy to miss, excuse me, is that if, if you have a plugin detached from solar itself, it means it can be released on its own life cycle. Um, you, could, you could more easily release versions, fix bugs, and more easily have it work in past releases. Um, today, if it's built into solar, like most plugins are, you'd have to do some jar surgery of moving code around to make a plugin work in a previous version. It's a pain. We don't have to do that jar surgery. We want things to just work. Um, so I'm really excited about all these secondary, secondary benefits, um, many of which certainly affect me as a committer and maintainer of solar itself. But, but uh, a bunch of these benefits should benefit you as well as solar users. This site is a site that uh, most of you probably don't know about. It's, uh, a, as the name suggests, it's a solar extension directory. Um, it's a website with some, um, not only plugins, but other, other things that sometimes work with solar, that, that can work with solar. And it's a place to find them. And I, I foresee this becoming, becoming the sort of de facto place where people register their, um, w register their own plugins so that you can find them. And they're, they're busy, by the way, working on um, making this system compatible with Solar's package system so that you can actually refer to it um, as a package repository. Um, so expect good things from here, expect it to grow, and expect the Solar Reference Guide to have more references out to the plugin, uh, to, to solar.cool. The new package manager, it's an 8.4. Uh, there's some major components of it I'll list first, and then we'll uh, I'll mention the kind of it's, it's sort of features or characteristics. There's a CLI component of the package manager, and I'll, I'll, I'll demo that briefly. And that um, interacts with a running solar instance. There's an HTTP API. There's a, there's a couple API, uh, APIs it touches. It also talks directly to Zookeeper, if I'm not mistaken, uh, behind the scenes. <clears throat> there's, so that, that's one piece there. So, uh, yeah, there's, a, there's an HTTP API for some degree of package management so that you can automate this stuff without having to use the CLI if you, if you want to automate any of this for your own uh, deployed system. Uh, and third, the most exciting component there um, is the file store, which is kind of a hidden feature. I'll, I have a slide dedicated to that because it's so cool. But it's basically, you got to put these jars somewhere. Um, and we really, we really need a separate place from the this, this places I listed on a previous slide. Uh, because these are these are managed, so this system has got some nice nice features. Um, one I want to point out is that it's a it's a online runtime system with Solar Cloud. Okay, the the CLI it interacts with a live Solar Cloud instance. It knows what packages are installed. It interacts with Solar to find out to for um, for discovery and such. Um, it would be nice. Uh, it certainly would be nice if it could if you could kind of prepackage pre-deploy pa uh, packages and, and such. Um, I think that, that that use case hasn't been exercised very much, but it, it um, yeah. Dependency isolation is uh, is key. Uh, the, these jars are not added to one big massive code uh, class path. No, every package, um, every, every versioned package for that matter has its very own class loader. If, mul if multiple collections are referring to the very same versions package, then they will get this, the, the class will be loaded once, not re repeated. So that's very good. And it, it will help help address some potential jar hell that can happen in sophisticated Java apps. <clears throat> security was thought through from the beginning. It has a very strong security story with a public key and a private key <clears throat> and, and trust. And uh, the, the trust is checked at, at runtime. 
a, an exciting and scary feature, depending on your, your point of view, or, or maybe you're both excited and scared about it like me, is hot loading. And this is the notion of deploying a plugin that will that'll be deployed live to the running node with, without having to actually uh, what's called reload the solar core. So imagine a query parser just showing up and no, no core reload or anything. It just, it just shows up. Um, that's exciting and scary at the same time. As, as we get more used to it, it'll become more commonplace than the norm, I, I think. Um, all plugins, like that, that, that cannot be done for some plugins, but for some it, it can be within Solar. Uh, Multi-version support allows for you to try out new versions and only deploy them to certain collections before you uh, feel more comfortable with, with certain versions of deploying it wider. Um, I've also seen some multi-tenant scenarios in my consulting practice where um, not, not every customer is on the same version. They don't want the same version. So that's rather nice, I think. And plugins, again, this is one of those uh, scary and exciting features at the same time. Plugins, um, excuse me, the package of plugins can include, include configuration for it, which means that it can basically self-configure itself. Um, that's opt-in, you can, at the CLI, you can say, nope, don't do it, I wanna do it manually, I don't want that, uh, don't do it. Um, and it, it, it makes sense for plugins, I think there's kind of two use cases in my mind that make sense. Plugins that have an obvious configuration, where like a query parser, most query parsers I've ever seen uh, with, in fact, maybe all of them have a straightforward configuration, you're always gonna do it the same way, so it'll do that for you. Um, the other um, the other is is kind of like a hello world, first time user for a, uh, for a plugin. So in that case, um, maybe the advanced user would go to configure it themselves. But the, the first time user, you have a great user experience by just trying out a plugin and being able to use it right away without having to um, do a bunch of configuration that can be complex for users less, less familiar with Solar. Yeah, as I promised, the file store is an exciting feature of uh, sort of a sleeper hidden feature. Um, <clears throat> basically, it's a uh, distributed peer-to-peer -peer synchronized file system based storage um, with a web API. The packages are placed there. Um, originally, it was envisioned as the so-called package store, and that's still presently, it's presently named as such in the ref guide for Solar. Um, however, that underlying code, it was re renamed last minute. It, it is the file store. The packages are in inside the file store. It has potential for to be used for other exciting things like machine learning models or um, who knows what, you know. Um, and it's sort of, uh, I, I don't know if the dot system collection, um, otherwise known as the blob store is uh, officially deprecated in nine yet or whether I'd like it to be. Um, that's sort of a competing mechanism that uh, wasn't quite adequate uh, for the new package manager. And so this new system got built uh, instead of using that. And so that old system is probably uh, a bit um, antiquated then. Um, so the, the, the dot system collection, if you're not familiar, is a special collection in Solar <clears throat> that you could put you know, blobs of data in. But there's a chicken and the egg problem where if you if you if you want to have packages that uh, are at the node and container level, then somehow you need to load them first. But if they're in the system collection, then that's impossible. So that's kind of how we ended up at having a, a dedicated separate system. So I'm going to do a little demonstration. Um, I'm going to start Solar with enabling packages. Um, I hope that this uh, special enablement flag is not needed in nine, I would hope so, but uh, I'll be using 8.6.2 where you do. We're going to add what's called a repository, which is a uh, collection of packages. Um, and for, for, for time purposes, I cut out a bit of uh, vocabulary. But um, just uh, briefly here, we have the notion of repositories that have packages and packages that have plugins. Uh, a package is just a collection of plugins. It's just the jar, uh, just a name uh, grouping of whatever plugins you may have in your jar. It might have one plugin, it might have a whole bunch. Um, if, if, um, as this gets more and more embraced, you might just have one for your company maybe, um, although you might theoretically break it down, but you probably have one. Um, I think it will be more typical. Uh, and okay, so we're gonna list the packages. Installing is uh, actually getting the jars into Solar. And deploying is involves a combination of both 
configuring and then relit on the collections to 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 open the, the collections with um, with the packages uh, accessible to it after. Okay, let me uh, back up a second. So uh, first, uh, yeah, okay, here it is. I, I do everything. I do lots of Solar and Docker these days. And here I'm running 8983. <clears throat> I'm running 8.6-C <clears throat> for Solar Cloud mode. And here's the system property that turns on the package manager. Okay, it's gonna start up in a moment. Okay, now over here, um, actually I just wanna just uh, very briefly show, still reload on the screen to show that it's running. Yeah, there it is, so it's running, okay. And I am going to, um, I'm going to bash into the container. Okay, there I am. Now off screen, I have some notes that I'm gonna paste in what I'm gonna do. So all I'm gonna do at the moment, uh, I wanna int introduce you briefly to uh, the Solaritis package. Um, so Solaritis is a plugin and it's been packaged uh, and it's moved out of solar from a contrib to a, uh, what I consider now to be a third party solar package. And it, the, the primary plugin inside is a response writer that uses velocity for templating, okay? You don't need to know much about that in, in this presentation. Uh, the point isn't too much. Uh, this, that's, that's besides uh, the details of solar writers don't really matter. Um, but I wanna show you that it lives here. Um, also conveniently, it has these instructions. This is actually what I'll be doing um, off screen. I have the steps to, to do these things. So um, I'm gonna, Get it. Uh, I'm going to create a core. Um, this particular, the particular steps I'm doing right now are, are for really for demonstrating how to how to use it. Uh, it's not necessarily the specific steps you would do. You would have your own um, your own plugin. Jeez. Um, I hope that, that stuff isn't on this. Hold on one second. I need to disable my notifications. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to, now that I've created um, a core, I am now, okay. I'm now adding um, a document to solar. And now we're gonna get to the more interesting stuff. That was the boring stuff that doesn't matter. It doesn't really have anything to do with packages, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is, first I wanna show you in solar package. This is new. By the way, whenever I run just about any Java command, uh, solar command, it starts off with some stuff about Java home. Don't worry about that. Or JSTAC. Again, don't worry about that. It has to do with the Docker environment and such. Okay, so here's, we, ha we have the commands that we can do on, from the CLI with package, install, um, install, deploy, and list in various steps. Uh, I think it's rather nice uh, that it has that documentation and color coded at that. We're going to first add a repo, a package repo. So look down there, we have bin solar, package, add repo. We're calling it Solaritis. And then we have the URL to the package repo. Okay. Now, what just happened right there? I wanna make, just so that it's a little bit less magical, I'm gonna go over to the solar admin screen, cloud, um, to look in Zookeeper and point out that repositories.json was added to, um, was added into Zookeeper, okay? I find when I'm learning new things, I wanna understand uh, like, what is it actually doing when I, what does add repo really mean? Um, it means that. It also uh, took some keys, um, some public keys that are at that repository and put them on the file store. So speaking of the file store, it's in Ver solar data. So that's solar home within the Docker image, okay? So notice that there's a file store down there, file store. And then we have trust, we have, so in there, the file store, we have some trusted and in there we have some keys. Now that we've added the repo, I'm going to do a command to list available. So this lists the available packages. And it uh, simply observes that we have this Solaritis package at a certain version and it's got a bit of documentation. So now I'm going to install. Solaritis. 
So at, at this point, there's just some metadata about this repo. Um, nothing is installed. There's just a, it's, it, we're just, we're, by adding the repo, we're saying we trust the repo and it's, we can kind of browse it. But now we're actually installing SolarItis. A little confusing here, by the way. SolarItis has a, re a repo repository and SolarItis is a package as well. And the actual plugin inside the package is not named SolarItis. Thankfully, that would be too many turtles on the way down. It would be a, um, it would be a velocity response writer or something like that. Okay. Um, so this, um, this is now installed. So what did that really do? I want to point out on the, in the file store, fancy new file store now has some jars. So you see file store in package, SolarItis is the name of the package, the version number. We, uh, Plus that. There we go. So we have a package manifest and we have some jars, both that hold the plugin itself and its dependencies. Okay. And uh, what, uh, but at this point, installing simply means that the plugin is, uh, that the jar files are, are there. But I pointed out earlier about configuration, it's not installed, doesn't mean it's totally actually ready to use it. Like this moment, we can't query solar using this plugin. It simply means uh, it's available to be used, okay? So that's what installation does. It puts the jar files on the solar nodes. The next step is to what's called deploy the packages. And that's comprised of two steps. Um, let me paste right here. I'm gonna do. Package deploy dash Y means answer yes to all questions. SolarItis is what we're deploying. We're gonna deploy this to the collections, uh, a list of collections. In this case, it's just one collection. Um, it would, it's common delimited, my underscore data. Um, and dash P DF equals, it, that wraps around. So um, let's make that a little bit more clear. That will work. Or did I mess that up because I uh, did that live? <laughs> well, anyway. Um, so uh, back up for a second. So this is deploying it. So the first step of deploying is configuration. So at the very top, it tells you, it shows you the configuration it's doing. And these configuration steps are coming from the package metadata that whoever crafted the package put there. So they chose to add a query response writer named SolarItis. So correcting myself, I said before that the plugin itself is not named SolarItis. Well, it is. <laughs> so we have a repo and a package and a plugin named SolarItis. Uh, in practice, by the way, I, I'd expect the repo to be solar.cool. Right now, I mean, things are early days. Uh, so there isn't yet this single place for uh, for all packages, but we'd, I'd like SolarItis, um, excuse me, uh, solar.cool to be that place. And then we would go there. We wouldn't be going to um, um, SolarItis. <laughs> um, Eric, Eric, Eric Hatcher is correcting me on how to pronounce it. It, it, it sounds like an STD, I don't know, but he says it's pronounced differently. <laughs> okay, I, I digress, let's continue. Um, so we have, uh, okay, so, so the package includes configuration. That configuration is printed right here. It tells you what it's doing. We're adding a response writer or a quest handler. Interestingly here, only the first one is fundamentally the actual plugin provided by the this package. Adding request handler is, uh, adding configuration and elements pointing to solar components like search handler that are built into solar itself. So you can put anything really in the, for better or worse, you can put anything in the configuration for a given package. You, you can configure request handlers and, or whatever. Um, in this case, it's all kind of designed to demo it. Um, I think in practice, if you really wanted to use this and I've seen, an, I think an ad agency company use it to uh, serve little HTML snippets in production. Um, you know, you'd, you'd, in practice, you'd, you'd, set up the configuration that suits you. you. You would do that yourself. You would not accept the configuration from the plugin because you'd want to have uh, full control over, over that, okay? And some other things, okay? And it's, okay, so once that configuration happens, then the applicable collections are, um, those collections are potentially reloaded or the plugins are hot loaded, it depends. If, if one of the plugins are required, if any one of the involved, uh, plugins uh, require a reload for them to be usable, then the solar core is reloaded. If all of the ones deployed are hot loadable, then you'll have a hot load and you won't have a, a solar core reload. 
Okay, so uh, I want to point out that this um, the the change there. So the, 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 those were configuration API commands that uh, configure uh, that result in some straightforward um, changes. Uh, so my data is the name of the config, and there's a couple. There's um, um, I, I want to point out uh, params. Uh, um, I want to point out something that I don't see at the moment. Anyway, let me hit reload right here. There it is. Okay. So this this is Solar, um, Solaritis running. This is powered by Solaritis. So we know it's installed. Um, I'm going to hit reload on this tree, config, my data. Okay, here we go. And params.json. This is one thing I want to point out. Um, parameters are where the uh, packages um, the packages are referenced and the versions are referenced in the config set. So that's where the linkage is. It's not actually in solar config. It's in this. And the reason why is because uh, this needs to be dynamically modifiable. And solar config is not dynamically modifiable, at least not by code. I mean, you can edit it yourself, but the system can't do that. So instead, it's done with, with params. And uh, I want to say config overlay, right? This is also um, config overlay is overlaid on top of solar config. This is uh, changeable, um, changeable configuration uh, dynamically. So this here we see the Solaritis response writer, and we see the slash browse request handler powered by search being added. Okay. So that showed some auto magic stuff happening. Uh, rest assured, if you don't want the auto magic package packages that self configure themselves, uh, you don't have to do that but you have to kind of accomplish the same somehow of what it does. So you, depending on how you go about managing your config at your company, you can either edit uh, files in the config set. Like for example, perhaps your config set is in source control and you edit the XML and JSONs and TXT files, et cetera, um, of your schema, et cetera. Perhaps you go that approach. I'm very familiar with that approach. I do that almost everywhere I use solar or Perhaps you prefer to use the config API to manipulate, um, to basically, in, in the config API, you can set params, you can set response writer, you can do those things that way. And that's a more, um, I want to say more imperative approach where you're running little bits of code that, that do the configuration. So I'm not going to tell you what's the right way. There is no right way. There's pros and cons to both. So on the screen here, we see an example of what the params JSON looks like um, if you were to do this manually. So here we see uh, the param set up for the package. We also see some parameters being added. And uh, I don't know what the V0 and V1 is, by the way, so don't ask me. Um, and, and the version linkage from for that particular package is there as well. And so the config side, this is the most, probably the most important part I want to show you. Notice that the class reference, the class reference is normally solar dot uh, a simple class name because solar has so many built-in ones that you can, there's a sort of a, um, an abbreviation, or it's a fully qualified class name to your plugin, which is what people do for your own plugin. Here, we're showing that you pref if, if the class contains a colon, it's interpreted as the plugin coming from the package named by what's left of that colon, in this case, Solaritis. So that's the magic linkage between your config set and referring to plugins that live in packages. Otherwise, if you don't do that, it'll try to resolve this from the default class loader, which doesn't have Solaritis. Okay, so how to create a package. I'm very briefly, um, can you give me a time update, um, Anshan or somebody? I wanna see how much more time I have left. Let me jump over to uh, Solaritis. I wanna point out, um, I wanna point out, uh, if, you were, if you wanted to make your own package, what's involved here? So from, from a, writing a plugin standpoint, nothing. You write plugins the same way, a, a Solar plugin hasn't changed at all. What's different is that you're adding, there's this new concept of a package, and that comes down to metadata about your package. So I'm going to go into repo, which has the public key of this repository. And here is where we have the JSON for this repository. And in that repository is where the package information is. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the package information can also be provided uh, separately from repository. I think it might be able to be placeable inside the jar, but don't hold me to that. Um, so if we see an example of that here, this repository lists, see it starts with an array because it lists, um, 
Uh, the repository is fundamentally, fundamentally a list of packages. So here we see the array opening. There's the first package. We see its name, description, and a list of versions. And, and below, and we see some URL signatures. Um, one thing that's kind of cool is that as you release new versions, versions that have the same dependencies, you can still refer to the same links. Um, so in, I, b I believe on the solar side, that doesn't mean you need to re-download all the dependencies that you may have in common with your plugin as it updates this version. And we have some uh, version constraints. Um, this, this case is eight to nine. And then we have the uninstall command, verify command, setup command. These are the configuration API calls to solar if you want this. If you don't want it, then don't have them. It's up to you to manually set that up. And we can see some variable substitution here about how it refers to the names of parameters and such. Um, let me see, what else? Uh, that's kind of the gist of it. I, 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 would, I would learn by observation and seeing what existing packages do in terms of how to package up your own. Okay, let me go back to the presentation. And here we are. Okay, yeah, future work. So um, the package manager is um, done-ish. Um, I mean, it's, it works. There's more that could be done internally. The, the, the biggest thing that, that I think is necessary is for it to support more plugin types. I mentioned 150 plus plugin types. Um, a small fraction of those are supported right now. Uh, fortunately, those are the most popular. So I think this is typical 80, 80 20 rule. You've heard like the most popular plugins are the 20%. And 80 percent of the most popular plugins are uh, held in 20. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm screwing that up. So I, I think we've, we've covered the, the, the big bases, but there's more to cover there. I would love it if Solar Standalone supported this. It doesn't uh, because of some of that metadata is in Zookeeper. I don't think that's a strong linkage. If someone wants to make that happen, um, I'd love to see uh, contributions that make it work in Standalone as well. <clears throat> some plugins support hot loading, some doesn't, some don't. Some could be made to. In particular, the schema, I forget what the latest is. The hope is that 8.7 supports any plugin in the schema. It that was the case, then it temporarily wasn't the case, and I think it's back to be the case now. There's some test, uh, flaky test issues that are we're dealing with at the moment. <clears throat> and okay, you, the, uh, most of the future work though, I think is on usage of the package manager, okay? I mean, the package manager's there, it works, uh, we all need to use it. So we have our contribs can be packaged, even the admin UI can be packaged. In fact, there's our competing admin UIs. I didn't even know this until, uh, a few months ago, that there's there are other admin UIs for Solar. Yasa is uh, seems to be the leading one. Um, it kind of blew me away that I, that I didn't know about such things, but yes, and uh, that that can be that can be deployed as a plugin because plugins can actually have UI components to them, which is not at all obvious, but it's true. Can, and uh, yeah, contribs need to be converted to packages, and it, basically Solar in nine. Uh, the, the, the contrib directory is going to be the basically a, a pre-trusted, pre uh, a, a pre-added repo from the point of view of the package manager, and therefore the contribs can be <clears throat> deployable as one step away instead of installing. And we envision uh, a slim, a slim solar, a uh, slim solar that is slim down, doesn't have a lot of these extraneous things, doesn't have the contribs and their dependencies, and instead those are downloaded on demand. I'm really excited about that. There's a Jira issue. Um, and so, oh, I'm, hold on. Uh, and promotion of solar.cool. Uh, I think this will happen organically as plugins start leaving solar and get getting packaged. They then need to find homes and people need to find them in those homes. Knowing about the existence of solaritis on GitHub at error catchers, is, that's not gonna cut it. Um, it needs to be registered on solar.cool. We all need to go to solar.cool to find out where our packages are and ideally be able to use it at, with, at, with the ad repo from the CLI, okay? Thank you. Um, let me see, 136, I could definitely talk about some more um, uh, some more things. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, I forget how much more time I have here. <laughs> I need to bring up my calendar. Okay, I think that's it. I've used up all the time. Whoops. Have I? Yes, I have.
thanks everybody for coming. I have no more time for questions. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm sure you want to get to the next uh, presentation. Um, so yeah, I thought Angela might jump on, but yeah, yeah. So it's, it's really exciting um, and it's growing. Please, uh, please check out the package manager. It's super important for solar, for the, for the health of the solar project. Um, yeah, and thank you. And thanks for coming to ApacheCon. See ya.